Hi students, welcome to this session here at Infinity Learn by Sri Chaitanya. Today we have another score session for you where we are going to look at a few physics questions from the grade 11 score paper from the previous year so that you have an idea about what is the level of questions asked, what kind you need to prepare. So as you will see, the questions are not extremely difficult. They are quite approachable as we get into it. For those of you who are new to this uh, series, new to this session, new to our channel here, welcome everyone. This is the Sri Chaitanya educational channel and over here we are currently discussing about the score exam which is the scholarship exam that is conducted by Sri Chaitanya. It gives you 100% scholarship, many more things. We'll get into that bit by bit. First, an ex first, just a little quick introduction before we head into the questions. These are all questions from the score exam. These are previous year score questions. So what exactly is score? It's a national level scholarship exam held by Sri Chaitanya. It's from grades 3 to 12. Today we'll discuss the grade 11 questions particularly. You have the option to give it both online and offline. And the goal is that we can identify the top talent in the country. We can award you. You also have the opportunity to study at Shri Chaitanya with 100% scholarships. So all of these facilities we can give to you. Uh, next, there are there's like a, it's almost a, lots of money involved over here. There's a huge scholarship, right? There's also cash prizes involved. There are also gadgets, NASA trips, many more things involved over here. You can register for it. Registration is completely free. So at any moment you can register for the score exam. It's on the September 28th and on uh, 12th of October. And if you're in grade 11, want to study from Sri Chaitanya in grade 12, it's all available to you through that. Okay, now let's get into the questions, the questions that have been asked in the previous year. Today we'll do 10 questions. I'll bring another part of this where I'll bring the remaining tw uh, 10 questions. There would be 20 questions in each section in your grade 11. So let's look at the first one. It says the work done in moving an object from origin to a point whose position vector is R vector is 3 I cap plus 2 J cap minus 5 K cap by a force of 2 I cap minus J cap minus K cap is how much? So over here, it's quite easy to do. We know work done is force vector dot displacement vector. Now displacement vector is this itself because the starting point is origin. So a vector pointing from the origin to this point is just the position vector. So we can just do the dot product between them. We have 2 i cap minus j cap minus k cap. That's the force vector. We do the dot product with 3 i cap plus 2 j cap minus 5 k cap. If I do the dot product, the i caps multiply, you have a 3 times 2. You have a minus 1 times 2. You have a minus 1 times minus 5. What do you get? You get a 6 here. You get a minus 2 here. And here you get a plus 5. So that's equal to 9. So the answer is 9 units option B. Okay. Let's try the next one. It says choose the wrong statement among them. Please be careful. We have to choose the wrong statement, not the right one. Let's look at the first one. The center of mass of a uniform circular ring is at its geometric center, which is a correct statement. Yes, we know if it's a ring, the center of mass is at the center, even though there's no mass there, still the center of mass exists at that point. Next, moment of inertia is a tensor quantity. Yes. Now, even though we most of the time deal with it as a scalar quantity, but it's quite like stress. It's essentially a tensor quantity, tensor quantity of rank 2. Next, we have the radius of gyration is a vector quantity. This is the incorrect statement over here because radius of gyration only has a fixed length. It does not have a fixed direction. The purpose of radius of gyration is very similar to a center of mass that instead of the full body, if I assume it to be a point mass, where should it be? It doesn't matter if it's on this side of the axis or the other. It won't really impact it. So radius of gyration is a scalar quantity, not a vector quantity. The fourth one is force in translational motion is analogous to torque in rotational motion. Yes, that's also a correct statement. So the wrong statement is option C. Third one we go to the dimensional formula of half epsilon naught E square. Now you don't need to put uh, the epsilon naught uh, dimensions here, electric field dimensions here. You know, this refers to energy per unit volume. This is energy per unit volume, right? Or if you want, you can even put epsilon naught values or and you can put the electric field dimensions and do it overall. 
half will have no dimensions or if some of you might know that this half epsilon naught e square talks about the energy per unit volume of an electric field now energy you know is ml2 t minus 2 has the dimensions ml2 t minus 2 volume has a dimension of l3 so that makes it ml minus 1 t minus 2 so it is option c okay we go for the next one in an experiment the percentage of error occurred in the measurement of physical quantities a b c and d are one person two person three person and four person then the maximum percentage error percentage of error in the measurement x where x is a square b to the power half c to the power 1 by 3 d to the power 3 is how much so this is basically finding percentage error and we know the way we find the percentage error is just each of those that are multiplied or divided we just take them and whatever their powers are that comes as a coefficient of their errors percentage errors so this is 2 times percentage error of a because a had a power 2 plus half times percentage error of b because b had a power half plus one third time percentage error of c because it's c to the power one third c even though it's in the denominator it doesn't matter it will still stay positive because we are looking for the maximum possible error it is 3 into percentage error of d so what do we get here uh, 2 times of 1 plus half times of percentage error of b is 2 plus one third times percentage error of c is 3 plus 3 times percentage error of d is 4 so take this out take this out we have 2 plus 1 3 plus 1 4 plus here is a 12 so 4 plus 12 the answer is 16 percent okay we go for the next one now if any of you have a doubt students please ask but this is mainly to give you an idea about what kind of questions are asked what level and as you can see these are all very doable these are all very doable for you so please you'll get a chance to compete against all the like almost a lakh students at one go all of our toppers had at one point given score exam so don't miss it at any chance next position of x versus time graph of two persons a and b are shown their relative velocity is 5 meters per second and the velocity of a is 15 meters per second the displacement of b when they meet is how much so it is shown here that when they meet that time is 5 seconds so to get the displacement of b i just need to find what the velocity of b is how do i do it see the relative velocity is 5 meters per second based on the diagram i see both velocities because both slopes are positive so both velocities are positive they are going in the same direction which means this relative velocity is magnitude of va minus vb thing is we don't know if va is greater or vb is greater but based on this diagram i can see that va is greater than vb because a has a greater slope than b that means my this relative velocity of 5 meters per second is va which is 15 minus vb so i can get vb is equal to 15 minus 5 10 meters per second so if i know the velocity of b is 10 meters per second then in a time of 5 seconds the displacement will be 50 meters okay harsha did you answer d for the previous one yes previous one was d this is c okay we go for the next one it says a vector is given 3 i cap minus 4 j cap and b vector is given minus i cap plus 4 j cap they have asked that we need to find the direction of a vector minus b vector so let's do a vector minus b vector what will i get look at the i caps i have 3 minus of minus 1 i cap because 3 and this is already minus 1 i cap and what do i have for j cap for j cap i have minus 4 and here there will be another minus 4 so what do i get here i get a minus b is equal to 3 plus 1 4 i cap here it's a minus 8 minus 8 j cap 
So if I draw the x, y axis, if I draw the x, y axis, 4 i cap plus 8 j cap means what? It is 4 units in this direction, minus 8 here. So the vector points are like this, 4 i cap minus 8 j cap. Now over here, how do I find the angle? Let's pick this angle here, theta. Then tan theta is equal to, this is 8 units divided by the base which is 4 units, which is 2. So theta is tan inverse of 2. And in which direction is it? It is in the clockwise direction from the x-axis. So it is option B. Tan inverse of 2 and from the positive x-axis we had to turn clockwise to get to it. Okay. Let's try this one. It says swimming is possible on account of which law of motion? First law, second law, third law, Newton's law of motion. Since you could say Newton's law of motion, but since there is a more correct answer over here, that is why we will go for the third law of motion. Because how are we swimming? We are essentially pushing the water back. And if we push the water back, the water pushes it forward and that is how we are able to move forward. Okay. So if there was no such mention, you could have said Newton's laws of motion. But in these kind of ambiguous places, if you see there is a more, more appropriate answer, even though this could have applied, but this is more appropriate, you mark that one. Okay? Yes, Harsha, correct. It is 3. Chill. Next one says, collision between real bodies are always inelastic. Loss of kinetic energy in elastic collisions is converted into other forms of energy like heat and sound. During elastic uh, collision, law of conservation is valid and collision between vehicles is inelastic. So we want the wrong statement. We can clearly see Collision between real bodies are always inelastic. Yes, in real scenarios, it's always inelastic. Perfectly elastic collisions are extremely rare. Loss of kinetic energy in elastic collisions is converted. I know this is the incorrect statement. Even I don't need to proceed. Because they are mentioning about a loss of Ke in elastic collisions. Elastic collisions distinct property itself is that there is no loss of kinetic energy. So that means this is the incorrect one. Third one says, during inelastic collision, law of conservation of momentum is valid. Yes, law of conservation of momentum is valid for all types of collisions. And collisions between vehicles is an inelastic collision. Yes, you can even think of it like perfectly inelastic because they crumple together and stick together. So it is option B is the correct answer here. Okay, we go for the next one. It's given a ruler, which is basically a scale, is held between the thumb and forefinger and is dropped vertically through the gap between the above fingers. It is caught between fingers again. If it is found, it has fallen by 19.6 centimeter, then the reaction time of the experimenter is what? Meaning, suppose this is the scale over here. He's holding the tip, right? Or his fingers are right here, just at the end. And if I release it and oops, my reaction time is too slow. But let's say he drops it and he's able to catch it over here. Then how do I get the reaction time? In that time, whatever since it released and in the reaction time, this moved down by 19.6 centimeter. So I just need to find, and this is a free fall, right? The scale had a free fall. So I just need to find in how much time does any object, scale or whatever object, free fall by 19.6 centimeter. That is the time I'm looking for. Because that is, in free fall it moved 19.6 centimeter before there was the reaction. So there's a normal formula, H is equal to 1 half GT square for free fall. We are looking for the time. Time is root over of 2H over G. Let's plug the values in. 2 into 19.6 centimeters, so there's a 10 to the power minus 2, divided by g is 9.8. This cancels with the 2. So I have a 4 into 10 to the power minus 2, which gives me t is equal to 2 into 10 to the power minus 1, which is 0.2 seconds. Option B. Okay. This one says two particles, A and B, are moving in a uniform circular motion. In concentric circles, radii is RA and RB, and their speeds are VA and VB. 
time period of the rotation is the same, what is the ratio of the angular speed? Now you might be confused here because angular speed is equal to V by R. So do I write proportional to BA by VB or do I write inversely proportional to RB by RA? It will be neither of them. Why will it be neither of them? Because the velocity and the radius will adjust itself for the same angular velocity. How do I know it has the same angular velocity? Because their time period is the same. Omega is equal to 2 pi over time period. Since, now see, other than time period, there are no other variables here. So you know if the time period is the same, 2 pi is constant, then omega is bound to be the same for them. Which means VA and R, VA, VB, RA, RB are different, but they would be different in such a way that their ratio should always stay constant because omega is constant. So if the omega is same for both of them, the answer is 1 is to 1. Okay? So with that, we finish the 10 questions here. We will bring another session where we will discuss even more questions so that you have a much better idea. By the way, uh, this is just for the registration. I have already mentioned the exam dates are 20th September, 12th October. You can register. It's completely free. There will be a link in the description. Also, you can go to this website, srichetanyascore.com. Over there, you can registration. Registration is completely free. You can give the exam both online and offline. There are offline centers all over the country. It's not just in the southern states, even in the northern, eastern, western states. Everywhere you'll find it. This is your syllabus. This is your syllabus and exam details that uh, it would be of 120 minutes. So it would be a two hour exam. Each section will have multiple choice questions and 20 questions in each physics, chemistry and maths. So 60 questions, 120 minutes, so you have two minutes per question. But as you can see, the questions are not that difficult, which, it, which will consume three, four minutes of time. Also, this is your syllabus. You see, it's not the full 11 syllabus, not the full 12 syllabus. <coughs> in physics, it's only the mechanics part. <coughs> <coughs> till rotational motion in chemistry you have basic concepts structure of atom classification chemical bonding and thermodynamics maths has sets relations functions trigonometry trigonometric functions sequence series straight lines limits and derivatives this will be the syllabus exam is on 28th september and 12th october whichever slot you get you can choose you can give your preference also <coughs> The last date to register is on 26th September and 10th October for the two tests. But please don't wait till that because almost a lakh students will appear for it. So registrations, the website might get stuck. There might be many factors. So register today. It's completely free. So you can just go over there and register for it. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll keep it till here, students. If you like the session, got value out of it, please make sure to like the video. Stay subscribed to our channel where more such question, discussion, practice will come. Also, more information about the score exam you will get from this channel. So, we'll keep it till here. If you require any other specific chapter requirements, please put it in the comment section. We'll try to bring those sessions for you. That's it for this session. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this session here. I'll see you all again in the next one.